Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Um, we're finally talking about today in history, and I'm going back to the year 1951, on this day, the 8th of July. And on this day in history, uh, the city of Paris celebrated its 2000th birthday. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but there are only a few cities in Europe that can actually boast of such rich history, such long history, that can boast that they have the word BC around their name. I mean, this is a city that is known as a city of light. It was most likely founded around 250 BC. And the history, like I mentioned, very rich. And this was, uh, it can be traced to the Gallic tribe um, known as the Parisi. Now, this tribe around this 250 BC settled on an island uh, that runs through present day Paris. It's a very long story about how, you know, Paris then eventually became the capital of France. But it was such a historic moment in time, you know, that um, they had to celebrate when they clocked their 2000th birthday on the 8th of July, 1951. Right now, Paris is home to about 2 million residents and an additional 10 million people live in the surrounding areas in Paris. And it's one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. It's renowned for sites like the, like the Eiffel Tower. And uh, this was built in 1998, 19, 1889 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. And that's it for today in history. Totally love it. I love the story. I love, um, you know, love how, you know, much, you know, can be learned in 2000 years in, you know, one city. And you can imagine the amount of development and growth and culture and tradition, well, well maybe not tradition, well, some tradition, um, but history, basically, that um, lives in that city. Um, it also reminds me of how much um, I need to travel and, you know, we need to visit the world. Um, it's, it's, you know, something that I believe everybody should, you know, f find time, resources, and do as part of their lives, you know, travel, visit Paris. Mm. There's a time that I lived in Paris. That's a lie. Also visit your village people. Don't be afraid. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting. And um, um, we hope, you know, that we can also be able to show off, you know, some of the, you know, the history that Nigeria has yes. after 100 years. After and talking years. about Nigeria, well, when, I, when I read stories about cities like this, it, it, and I think about you know the comparison to Nigeria. You see how they preserve structures that have been there for decades yeah. and decades. But here, if when a man has money, he feels oh the mud house is outdated and they, they you know they demolish it and build a new one. I'm not saying don't build a new one, but there's just an attitude that we have that unless you go to like the remote hinterlands, would you find, you know, buildings or you know, mud structures that have been there, have been standing for thousands and thousands of years? We need to preserve these so I things. Think, so I think the problem is really because we don't take our tourism um, you know, sector seriously. That's one. And then second, we, we don't value, I don't think in Nigeria we value our story as much as we should. There are certain monuments, there are certain cities, you know, that have been, you know, they are age long. You know, the the, Bin, the city of Benin, Ibadan. Languages you know, that and, are even lost, um, yeah, extinct. You know, the, there's so much history in, you know, in four, Nigeria. five, six different cities, you know, in Nigeria that should make should make books across the world. You know, people would love to read about. Uh, but these things aren't things. I mean, I, I remember that you know we probably heard these things when I was in primary school. You know, maybe junior secondary school, but that's the end of that conversation. And you stop to hear about Ibadan, you stop to hear about um, Belkota, you stop to hear about, you know, some of those mountainous regions, rocky areas in the, no in the north, you know, that really had rich, rich, rich history. Um, the um, city of Benin also, the only time you hear about those things now when there's arguments about where you're, whether Yoruba people came from Edo State or the Yoruba But do you know why these things are, do you know why this is why it is today? It still goes back to our. Uh, past our history regarding how we communicate and how we preserve our own history. Yeah. We know that for Africa, we were big on oral tradition, right? We pass our, our, our story through word of mouth. The father tells the grandfather or the grandfather tells a father who tells a son. That's how it is. And you know, over time, your memory changes your memory fades in some way so you don't exactly get the full grasp of the story and you sometimes you forget but you see abroad how they write they document you things know, so, so, so we need to start documenting our own stories rather than it's still you know, failure it's, it, it's on sad our part, that it's sad that if i want to find out about my own city it's it's a book written by a white man or something compiled by a white person on wikipedia you don't have nigerian authors telling authentic nigerian stories about our history about our, i think that's one of the reasons why we have 
what we have. So we need more writers. One we need of the, more storytellers, yes, more historians. Yes, you know, and I agree that we should do, you know, not do oral, you know, transfer of, of knowledge and history. These things should be written. Uh, they should be they should be documented. But that's when we decide that we're going to take these things seriously. seriously indeed. Um, for a long time, we have failed to take it seriously, and that has given the space for people to rewrite history and create their own narratives, narratives. from from um, you know where we're coming from. Um, these are cities that are thousands of years old. People will tell you where the Igbos come from. Even those who want to argue whether the Igbos are Jews or not Jews, you know, that's a really weird argument. But they will tell you so much about, you know, how long the Igbos have been on the earth. You know, how long the Bini people have been on the earth, how long the Yoruba people and Fulani people have been on the earth. They will tell you all those stories. But we, we in Nigeria don't have those Take, take for instance, documented. Egypt. Egypt is one of the oldest civilizations on earth, right? They documented yeah. quite all right but they use hieroglyphics right it's this system of you know writing communicating through certain inscriptions and people had to go study how to understand and decipher those languages and codes there was the rosetta stone that had all you know thing packed full of information about where we're coming from but because it wasn't english a language that we all generally now have come to understand you know that barrier is still there so it still it still remains that we need to preserve where we're coming from through Nothing you know wrong with by writing the, by writing stories about it Nothing wrong with modernization, but you know, shouldn't throw away you Definitely. Know, your, your own values and your culture and your story. All right, um, we spoke about football a few minutes ago with Wally Scott. I'm going back to tell you a little bit more about football in history, I'm, and uh, we're going back to 2014. Um, in recent history, not very long ago, a couple of months ago, about a year ago, we saw one of the most shocking defeats. Um, in football history, and that was Bayern Munich against uh, Barcelona that ended 8-2. But before that, in 2014, on this day, one of the world's most shocking defeats um, occurred, and that was Germany completely blowing away the Brazilian national team that was at that time seen as favorites to win the World Cup. Germany eventually did win it, and Brazil came out fourth. But on this day in history, Germany beat the hell out of Brazil. <laughs> Seven <laughs> goals to nil. My beat God. them black and blue and many other colors. Seven, one, I beg your pardon. Beat them numerous colors uh, that were not in any way good. Um, <laughs> Bit them rainbow. It, it, was, it was it was also an interesting day because nobody expected it to be that bad. They and, never expected. I mean, people maybe had you know thought that oh well, one team was going to win, mm -hmm. but no one thought it was going to be that bad. Um, I think Tony Cruz eventually, be, you know, um, also um, uh, I think scored three goals in that game and took over as highest goal scorer at that time from um, Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. It was a shocking, embarrassing defeat of the Brazilian national team. And, uh, and let me share a couple of records that it also um, broke. Okay. It marked several record tournament records. Germany's win marked the largest margin of victory mm -hmm. in a FIFA World Cup semi-final. The game saw Germany overtake as the as the uh, overtake Brazil as the highest scoring team in a World Cup tournament history and become the first team to reach eight World Cup finals. Wow. Miroslav Klose scored his 16th World uh, Cup career goal and surpassed Brazil's own Ronaldo as a tournament's all-time goal scorer. Mm. Um, and of course, uh, Brazil at that time had a 62 match on beating uh, record, record, but you know that ended on that day with those goals, those seven Oof, goals. Um, eventually, of course, Brazil still lost You know the third place match um, and eventually finished fourth while Germany went on to win the World Cup. Wow. The this match, like, it's, it baffled a lot of pundits. It baffled lots of sports analysts because the question they, they could all ask was what went wrong? What went wrong with Brazil? What went wrong with this match? Like you mentioned, it went on to break lots of records as one of the most goals scored in the semi final, yeah. you know, and, and all of that. But yeah, I guess that's what records are meant for to be broken. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, another record I remember is Manchester United against Roma, <coughs> seven, seven goals to one, Champions League. Just always going to throw in a Manchester United, mm. you know, just in there. Just like to squeeze it in somewhere. No big deal. Anyway, that's today in history, 2014. Seven goals to one, uh, Germany against Brazil and, of course, uh, the city of Paris. Yes, 1951, when they celebrated their 2,000th year anniversary. And that's it from us today. Um, thank you for staying with us all through till 10 a.m. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Gi Ogbawa. Wish you a very beautiful Thursday ahead.